Bacaniski. What's up, man? Past, future, present, intros, names, Travis, tour guide, tree whisper. You know how it goes. <laughs> Uh, having the no roof is far more exciting than whatever shelter it provides. Again, there's shelter everywhere. So don't let that be the determining factor of where you're going to base your entire existence and perception of the universe. So, but, and when you're out there, you're not going to, like, you can't just make breakfast like this. Like, you oh, you can. Like... Cutting board, you can bring that anywhere. Knife, you can bring that anywhere. Food, they got coolers, you know. And uh, in fact, it's even better. Because then, of course, you got the coals rolling, you know, so you can either set up your grate. If you want to, cast irons, you know, boom, bring them up with you. I got a few different sizes. Throw that right on the coals, man. Uh, so, yeah, it's a hell of a lot better. You don't have to worry about bacon smoking up the room. Hey, open up the window. You, you know, you, you, you're bombing out the house. It was like, shit, no worries there, man. Cook all the bacon you want. That's true on the conveniences. Um, but, you know, streams run. And when you get, it, it forces, again, teaches you to be adaptable, teaches you to dial in some methods. You actually start using your brain space again, where it's like, ooh, running water would be convenient because we got the open sky, we got the coals, and then we even got, you know, you get propane stoves, you can bring them, man, it's easy as shit. But then you're like, okay, I need some running water. How are we gonna work that out? You know, maybe you set a jug up on there and you figure that out, or you get this whole nozzle head dialed in, or you channel the waters, you know? So it's awesome because there's like a hundred little things in a day that you have to innovate when you're out there. You don't just get to like, oh, this is where I'm gonna bring my body over here. Now, oh, here, this is what you do. Oh, you go over here to take a shit. Oh, this is what you do just like this. You're gonna have to like make it work. Like, hmm, how am I gonna, am I just gonna do the one cheek stump kind of thing? And then boom, let it hang off, work that. Or am I gonna squat down? Am I gonna like pull on the tree and like work that? You know, or am I like, am I just gonna take a five gallon bucket in a toilet seat and just rig up a fucking you know, shit? Whatever you want to work at, man, like you can cut the hole out of the bottom of a chair, you know, however you want to get innovative. We're just like, fuck any of that. Like, I ain't playing them game. I'll just, I'll just do it like a wild animal. It's all good. It's, it's forcing you to adapt, you know, and not let them do the thinking for you. Not let your house do the thinking for you. Like, oh, this is where I go to do this, you know, and, and you'd be amazed on what a difference that that makes because when you get like all too used to going right there, for the sink, doing right there, just, oh, I wash my things this way, this is exactly how I do it. What happens in your mind is it starts to close off and atrophy all the other options, and so you don't see what's hidden in plain sight, even. So maybe you're looking for a new career path, but you can't even see, you're thinking, you're thinking through a straw. You're like, I wonder if I can see my perfect life through your straw of perception. You're like, this is great. Really, you're more cut off than you are empowered. And that's how I feel. From going back and forth for over 10 years now, like. You know, living in the woods in the summer, and sometimes in neighborhoods, if I'm doing like a tree gig or whatever else, or a landscaping gig, because sometimes they're gonna be two or three weeks long, so then I'm, I am in, in a town, uh, you know, for that period, but then it's right back out to the woods. But either way, so six months that lifestyle, six months in the city lifestyle, you're able to like really kind of see what does what. Like, okay, the power and, and goodness of like routine and all that. Now you can get all healthy. You can get super convenient. When you got to do anything in, in the middle of the night, you just got to just get up, boom, temperature controlled environment, walk to the bathroom real quick, quick piss, done deal. Oh man. And then just go like fall back into bed. How convenient. That's great. That's cool. You know, you don't have to like unzip the zip. Oh shit. Oh god. Oh, it's fucking freezing. Shit. Oh. But eventually you get used to all of it either way. Uh, grateful for this place in the winter, obviously, because it's cold as shit up there. And a lot of the roads aren't even open. So 
again, there's value to both and we're talking about growing together, you know. So that's that's what that's the badass thing about the whole back and forth, man. It gets to everything gets to inform one another. You get to come back in the city, load up on some gear, clean up, do some laundry, boom, get a little comfort, eat, gain some weight back, and get your ass back out there, you know. Get your bacon where you want it to be. Hey man, we don't need much. We're talking like well. And then when you cook this up, yeah, just cook the whole package. Make the whole one and then, you know, you just kind of nip at it through there in, uh, in brunch hour. And usually that's enough. And then if you don't, well then guess what? It looks like Mr. Deer is getting some beef bacon. Oh, you shouldn't be doing that to the deer. It's like, oh yeah, there's a million and billion fucking things we shouldn't be doing. But uh, I think that feeding deer bacon every once in a while to like try to kindle the little relationship between us and, and those little cuties, I, I think that's just fine. But I'm gonna put this in the comfortable, uh, convenient ass McFridge right here, real quick. You know what I mean? <laughs> Since I got it. Solid trio, man. With this, it's like it's always you, know, you get your obviously your layer of your your base layer of bacon, man, so you can get that oil pumping. But then obviously you got to work you some onion situation, whether that's in the form of the red onion, sweet onion, boom. Of course, I love the, the green scallion and leeks, man. You got to get in there. Onion. Mushroom, corn, boom, works every time. What do you call it? What's the name of the uh, meal? I don't give it a name, man. I'll let it name itself. The essence though, of like onion, mushroom, corn. Cause corn got that sweet, man. It's a little bit of pop, you know, but of course cook your onions, you know, and, and mushroom together, you know. Corn doesn't need that much. You can kind of just throw that in at the end, let it cook maybe a minute or two. Green onions are always fantastic. So I usually probably uh, run that play the most in the onion department. And they're so versatile, man. Just a couple, you know, boom. Remember them tree oyster mushrooms, man. Fantastic. Have these on standby to throw in once that bacon starts uh, getting there. Look at that. So you get that same thing, man. You get a nice hot bed of coals. Not too much, but you know, just a little bit. That's another thing to fine tune. You know just how many coals it takes get your bacon where you want it to be. What are you drinking? Just some straight up coffee and milk, slightly diluted, you know? I always like to take the edge off it a little bit, man. What's your view on caffeine? I mean, obviously just, you know, you're one serving a day. Maybe it's like a serving and a half, but mainly, man, nothing after noon. My, again, I know if you're like a 20 something, like you can just like, whatever, you can do you can drink coffee at eight o'clock, it doesn't matter. But for the most part, going forward, like, have that, have your like caffeine window, you know? Not, certainly not first thing in the morning, but like always eat like fruit first thing in the morning. Love that, no stimulants. You know, maybe if you're gonna have a little uh, oatmeal or whatever, do that. But then coffee time when it comes to like, you know, kind of brunch time-ish, like either late breakfast, you know, when you get into like bacon and eggs, oh man. So you're not like hardcore, no caffeine ever. There is certainly a value to that. I mean, hey, if you live a better lifestyle and are totally in touch and you're not doing caffeine, like, fantastic, man. I, I love at least doing one day, obviously, a week with no stimulants. A any kind of a coffee or tea, anything with caffeine in it. Because if I'm, like, not drinking coffee and hating it, well, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe you should just drink a little coffee, maybe smoke a little weed, and enjoy your existence. Tuned in to that, that passionate vibe, if you will, you're gonna see so much more. Like you're gonna feel so much more. And you're gonna be there. And if you're and if you're so busy, I'll just pick on vegans for a second. You know what I mean? A lot of times they like they'll be vegan, but it's like they're fucking ass rods though. Otherwise, you know, and they're like very judgmental or be religious extremists. It's like, man, what good is your religion if you're gonna be like think you're so self righteous and then like be extremely judgmental ass prick otherwise? So it's like maybe you should probably just enjoy a little bit. And then we don't have to hear you, bitch. Oh, oh, oh. Organic butter? Oh yeah, man, a little bit of that Kerrygold Irish butter. It's fantastic, man. Look at that. Yeah, it always does the trick. Oh yeah. So yeah, rock that. Rock a little of 
remove this. Let me get that situated. Okay, so, boom. A little bit of this. See, this can be done anywhere, you know, should. You, you, can, you can bring plates out there with you, and I even got tables I bring out to camp, so you know. It's like, holy the shit. The fancy city people. You're right, oh yeah. It's like, you want yourself a table, boy, you know. <laughs> Shit's ridiculous. And then, but this is where that, that Gouda comes into play, you know? A little bit of that aged Gouda, man. Come on now, boom. Put it in there. You don't need much, because it's potent, and there's already so much going on in there, man. So you don't need much. I mean, we're talking like, boom. Something like that. Easy bites. Because a lot of times when you're out there camping, you got yourself some dirty fingers. And you don't want to have to keep washing them every second. But it's dirty with actual dirt, which is fantastic. You can eat that stuff all day long. It's not like city doorknob dirty, where it's like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I don't know where that boar's hands have been. <laughs> I'm porn, probably. <laughs> And that's where the coffee comes in. So you don't want to make too many sacrifices because when you do that shit, you just don't want to do that shit. But you're going to want to get in on this. Man, oh man. Yep. Mm hmm. How much of your time when you went through the Marines contributes to your toughness? Or would you have been this tough without that? Physically, I don't know. Like, it's. Uh, it's tough <laughs> to quantify that because, you know, you never know. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I was already training really hard before I went in, which is probably why I went in. I had to prove something to myself, you know. Um, but uh, I guess there, there's some toughness associated with it, but most importantly is where to steer it. Like, because you can get tough and get really good at putting up with stuff. But then, what good is that? Because then you're not living your best life. You're just really good at tolerating the symptoms of not being on your course. And I had a lot of money in, in the pipeline, like ready to, ready to close, but I just like left it all. No, I had like 100,000 worth of deals in the pipeline going. When I sold all my stuff <clears throat> at that time, I drove my vehicle back to the dealership, turned it in, shut off my credit cards, it was just like, Fuck it. Did you just get so fed up with consumerism? Or did you have some epiphany? It's all fake and it's actually sabotaging from your real existence. Certainly not being judgmental when I'm saying this, but I know just for me, um, it, it's all fake. Like if you're watching this really bubbly TV show and then your best friend walks in, you know, your, your attention then shifts to them, you would hope. don't want to be a millionaire in that way because for me life is a paid internship to mastery if you had a bunch of money you would have just bought those problems off the highest high like I mean really consumerism is it's not even that high I mean if you're yeah if you're like a nobody and you've been drinking dirty water your whole life you're like yeah it kind of seems like whoa I'm in a five-star hotel now holy shit this is whoa but eventually you acclimate and realize like there, that still has its ceiling too. Food only gets so rich. Wine only gets so rich. Sex only gets so good. Like it's, there's not even that much to buy ultimately. And so when you get too caught up and consumed with that, you are actually losing sight of grander, more inexplicable things. Things that keep you in a state of awe your whole existence and that cannot be quantified. Uh, I love what I do. I absolutely love working with the trees. Like, I can't get enough of it, man. Like, I'll do it for free. You know, don't tell the city people that, but, you know, I can't not do it. Like, when I'm out at these campsites, of course, man. You know, I love to, you know, obviously I always gotta landscape the campsite, get all the fucking glass out of there and shit, you know, and like, usually redo the fire pit a little bit, make it a little more conducive. You know, you want to be able to like barefoot walk all around the campsite and not worry about nails and screws and bullet shells and weirdness. Uh, you know, make that really nice. And, uh, you know, and just, you know, kind of have a little 
I guess that 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 pride of ownership style, not like not like you own the campsite, but just that everyone that goes there is like, whoa, this is a sacred space. This isn't just some fucking Vegas of the woods where oh, I just go and get all my shit out, get drunk and just do whatever and just leave it all there, man. It's like whoa, no, this is like sacred space, all of it, the campsites and all of the ground in between. That we leave a wake of love wherever we go. That everything we do is an inspired action. And then hey, if it's not don't fucking do it, you know? So if you're doing a job because you have to, well, maybe don't, you know? There's an infinite amount of things to do. So if you're not in a place like that, unless you're just 16 and you're like, you gotta get your job real quick, son, you don't even know what you want, whatever. Yeah, I get it, there's a time and place. But for the most part, you gotta do what you feel is aligned. like. Quit living fake shit, man. Quit living fake life. You know, that's the thing. And they feed off that. And, the, and, the, and every day, the more and more that you live a fake ass life, the infrastructure that imprisons you gets stronger. Because that's another day's essence that they took. Maybe they took from your baby boomer parents who just think, oh, the system's the answer, whatever. And now you got that much tougher of a t prison to break, that much tougher of a matrix to escape. You know, so it, it is up to you. It's up to all of us to live our best life. Because when you send energy down the other pipelines, it's harder and harder to break. Being in tune is not just a luxury, you know, it's a necessity at this point. Because we are growing, we are evolving, but into what? That's up for, you know, that there's, there's, there's always this ever developing complexity about the universe, whether it's like, hydrogen, helium, and trace amounts of lithium becoming stars and forging all these elements and then these rich solar systems to live into. Or if it's just complex thoughts and, you know, fires and teepees growing into these complex cities. But it's like what we grow into is the key. Again, it's whatever wolf we're feeding. If the greed wolf is getting fed, society is going to look greedy. You know, cities are going to look like teeth, you know? But if it's evolved on a different format, which it just as easily can be, I'd love to see what those cities look like.